Hey guys, so um, I got kicked out of my room, so this is a different presentation, so I'm hod hodgepodging this. But uh, this is our first um, graphing functions uh, topic, and it's all about translating. We've already done this with parent functions, um, where we did the plus K and the H. This is a reminder lesson. So, if we remember back to the beginning of the year, Whenever it's plus k here, it's plus k moves the graph up. Okay? Whenever it's minus, minus k, it's going to move the graph down. Okay? So, you notice here with the plus k, it's not inside the, the parentheses. It's outside. You're not going to see any parentheses. Well, here, it is inside the parentheses, the h. The h moves it horizontally. Okay. Now, if you see a minus h, a minus h is actually going to move to the right. Okay. And a plus H is going to move it to the left. It's opposite of what you would think. Because usually if uh, we're moving to the left, you'd, it's a negative. In this case, if we're moving to the left, it's a plus H. Um, and that's because if you have a minus, it's always written as X minus H. So if I want something on the negative realm, it would be minus a minus, which becomes a plus. Okay? So then we're going to be graphing here. So now we're going to graph an example one and two here. So we have to decide, is it K or is it H? So because this plus four doesn't have a parenthesis, uh, it's going to be the K. So that's a K. So normally, a quadratic has these three points, okay? Uh, they normally have the origin, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. And it looks like a U, okay? Now, this plus 4 tells me I'm going to take this normal graph, and all I'm just going to do is take all of these and move them up 4. And I'm going to create a new graph. That's the same as the old one, only shifted. And you guys can't see that because that is running out of ink. Okay, so that one is shifted up. So if I erase this original, it looks exactly the same, only shifted up four units. Okay, I do the same thing with the x plus three. Again, this plus 3, it's an H. So this is going to move it actually to the left 3. So I'm going to take these three points, and I'm going to move them left 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And all it is is the parabola moved over 3 units. So on the back side, we talk about dilations and reflections. Okay, We don't use those terms. The book uses those terms. I talk about a narrowing and a widening. So typically the parabola with just x squared, nothing in front, um, typically go, goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. It has kind of a slope of up 1 over 1. Okay, if we put an A in front of it, so an A x minus H squared plus K, that's the vertex form of an equation. If we have an A, we treat that almost like a slope. And that's what creates a narrowing or a widening. So if it is, A is greater than 1, so I'm saying 2, 3, 4, 
2.5, okay? That parabola is going to get very narrow, okay? It's going to go up very quickly. Just like a line, when you change the slope and it was more, it went up faster. When it was less than 1, okay, a fraction, 1 half, 1 third, okay, that parabola is going to get wider. Okay. Just like slope, it went from this to being kind of shallow, kind of uh, not rising very much. Okay. That's what happens with a parabola. It, it can either open up or uh, be very narrow. A reflection is when that is negative. Okay. So if I put a negative in front of the x squared, what happens is this parabola flips and it flips over the y-axis, okay, or the x-axis. Flips, so it's upside down. So if we look at these examples, okay, f of x equals x squared. So that's our normal parabola. And I, I can just graph that real quick. Hopefully you can see that light green a little bit. Um, now the only difference is, now it's 2x squared. So this 2 acts like a slope. So I'm going to rise and I'm going to run. So this origin point does not change. That, that's my vertex, and that does not change. It's the stuff around it that changes. So instead of going up 1 over 1, I'm going to go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Because remember, both sides of the parabola are the same through the axis of symmetry. And now I can draw it, and you can see that it's a lot narrower. It's going up twice as fast. In example B, we have a one half, a negative one half. That's going to be my A, and I also have this minus three. So the question I have is, okay, is this minus three H or is it K? Because there's no parentheses, it has to be the K. So I'm going to take my original points. My three points, I always just mark them a little bit. And then I'm going to move them down three. So I'm going to move them all down three. So now my parabola is moved down three. I can kind of sketch it out like that. Okay. Now I am going to take this negative one half. Okay. First thing that negative does, it flips it upside down. Again, it does not change my vertex, so that middle point is going to stay the same. Okay. The A is a little bit different than slope. Normally, we would go down 1 over 2. In quadratics, we can't, it's not that solid number, uh, but there's a little trick to it. This 1 half, okay, we go down a half and then over one. Down a half, over one. And what happens is it gets wider and it flips upside down. So it's not like solid movements when you have fractions. You actually have to kind of estimate where it's going to be. Uh, in this case, a half is really easy. A third, you just have to try to make it as close to possible. And that is how you graph in vertex form. So please work on the example problems and then take the pre-assessment.